Hey guys, it's Erica, and as you can tell by the title of the video, today we're going to be talking about the amazing Cebu Blue Pothos. This plant is such an easygoing plant. You can neglect it a little bit, and it's going to be 100% fine. It's also pretty fast growing, so if you're looking for a plant to give you, you know, like quick spikes of dopamine every time you see a new leaf about to unfurl. This is a really good plant for that as well. So let's get a little bit into the care for it. This plant can survive in bright and direct light, medium light, and low light. So if you have kind of a low light area in your home, this is a good plant to put in that area. Granted, if you do give it a low light situation, its leaves are not going to be as large and it's probably not going to go grow as quickly as it would if you have it in bright and direct sunlight because they grow very quickly, very large leaves in bright and direct sun. And the less sunlight you give it, the less optimal those conditions are to make the plant grow to its fullest potential. But if you don't got a lot of light, you don't got a lot of light and... Sometimes we just need some beautiful plants in places we don't have a lot of light at. So this is a really good option for that. They do prefer brighter light. If you want to achieve that really, those really large leaves, get, get it looking all bushy and full, then I recommend giving it more light. Not direct sunlight though, because the leaves will scorch and burn and then you're going to lose that leaf and you're going to be sad about it. So no direct light. As much light as you can give it will be perfect. I have several plants. Um, <laughs> one of them I keep on an east-facing porch. I believe that is the one that gets the most light. It's this big mama right here, and she absolutely loves it there. It's a really good spot. So there is some early morning direct sunlight, but that is the only direct sunlight it gets. Early morning sun is the least harsh sunlight that your plant can get, so that's why it's okay for this plant to get some early morning sunlight. I have another one that I keep in a north-facing window, which is the lowest amount of light from a window you can get from a northern window. And then I have my other one in a south-facing window, but it is kind of in the corner, so I feel like that is the one getting the least amount of sunlight. In these three spaces that I have my plants in, the lowest amount of light they're getting is medium light. I wouldn't say any of them are in a low light environment, which is why their leaves are looking so luscious and large. Now for the watering requirements for this plant. This plant is very similar to a golden pothos. If you have a golden pothos, whatever you're doing for that plant is what you can do for this plant. Whenever the soil is almost completely dry is when you should water the plant. There's no set amount of days that I can recommend to you because depending on the environment in which you have your plant, that's gonna kind of vary the time that it takes for your soil to dry. So that is why it is of the utmost importance to water based on your soil dryness, not the amount of days that someone recommends to you. Grabbing a moisture meter and being able to kind of check all the way down at the bottom of the pot and see what level the moisture is. Now, once you have done that so many times, it kind of becomes like you just see the plant, you kind of know it needs some water. If you don't have a moisture meter and you can't really tell how dry the soil is by sticking your finger in the soil, I honestly can't really tell by that method myself, which is why I <laughs> stick to a moisture meter, but you can wait until the plant starts to look like it needs water. This is an example of a plant that looks like it needs water. I watered it today, so it should start to perk back up and look just like this one, probably by tomorrow morning. So this is how a really thirsty plant looks and you can water it then. But if you want your plant to, you know, grow in the best conditions, I wouldn't wait till it starts to look as sad as this one, and I would water it kind of a little bit before it gets to that sad point. But just to be safe, you can wait until it gets to this point. It's not going to do it's not going to be detrimental to the plants as long as you don't keep doing this every single time you're about to water. Moving on to fertilizer, I really like to use fish fertilizer. It's natural and it's very gentle so you won't burn your plant with it. It also comes in a bottle that is very concentrated so you can keep adding water and I find that it's cheaper that way instead of buying a pre-made liquid fertilizer because 
when you buy a pre-made liquid fertilizer, you're kind of paying for the water that's already in there, but when you need to add water, you get you get more bang for your buck. So I really enjoy fish fertilizer. I have the Alaska brand. I just bought it from Amazon and I use this during springtime and summertime. I will use this more often because my plant really starts to grow vigorously during those months. So I will use it about every two weeks, but other than that, I'll use it about every month and it works pretty well. My plant seems to really like it, so that is what I would recommend for your plants as well. It doesn't have to be fish fertilizer. Honestly, a downside of fish fertilizer is that it smells really badly and your soil will kind of smell for a little bit until <laughs> it dries out more. So you can also use any gent gentle synthetic fertilizer that you find and that should be okay as well. Speaking of soil drying out, this plant likes a really fluffy, well-draining soil as do most plants. What I would recommend if you are making your own soil is to use 50% coca coir or peat moss, 30% pumice or perlite, 10% or a uh, fine grade orchid bark, and 10% worm castings. I have a whole soil video if you want to check it out. I just posted so that could be helpful for you if you want to make your own soil for this plant. But otherwise, you can use any general potting soil that you find. If you are someone who tends to overwater your plants, you can add some perlite or pumice or orchid bark to that soil mix. Maybe add 30% of the amount of soil that you're going to add of one of those additives so that it can dry out more quickly and you're less likely to overwater your plant. I personally just like to make my own mix so I can avoid all of that stress. <laughs> but um, also if you use a moisture meter, it probably isn't that big of a deal. Um, any potting soil should do. If you use miracle Grow though, then you definitely should add some perlite or pumice or orchid bark to that mix just to be safe. Regarding humidity, this plant is not picky about humidity at all. I live in Southern California. I don't give it any special treatment regarding humidity. I just leave it outside or in front of my window, not really thinking about humidity at all. So you don't have to worry about humidity. You don't need a humidifier. Like I said, this is a very easy plant to care for. It's very easy going. Now that I think we've covered everything, we can get into the propagation of this plant, which is extremely easy. You just need to cut below a node and you can either keep the leaf on that node or you can rip it off depending on how you feel. I tend to leave the leaf on and then stick it in water. You can also propagate this plant by soil instead of sticking the cutting in water. You can put it in soil. I personally prefer water. I've had a higher success rate of propagating my plants in water, but if you enjoy propagating plants in soil, then that is a valid way to do it as well. I started off with my mother plant and every other Cebu Blue I own has come from her, so I have her to thank. But yes, it's very simple. You can even take one leaf cuttings, you can take two leaf cuttings, three leaf cuttings, whatever you feel or how you want your other plant to look. If you give this plant everything that it desires, then it will give you some really nice, beautiful leaves. The new growth tends to be lighter and shinier. Some of the leaves sometimes look like they are kind of bluish, hence why it's called a Cebu Blue Pothos. And some of the leaves can also get fenestrations. So I have this one here. This is a cutting and it has fenestrations on it. This is the only leaf that I have that has fenestrations on it, but I really love it. Don't mind the plant, it's drinking water right now. Overall, this is just a really easy plant. It's great for beginners, it's great for plant lovers who have a ton of plant children, and they just need one that is not too fussy. That is it for today's video. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and to show my appreciation, I'm going to be giving away five cuttings to five different people, so you can just leave a comment down below, and the winners will be chosen next week on... Sunday, so it's going to be on June 7th. Oh my gosh, it's already June. <laughs> but if you're chosen and you don't feel like you need a cutting, you can choose to gift it to someone else in the comment section. Just let me know when you contact me by email. So I will be replying to the winners to 
email me and that's how we'll get it all sorted out but you just need to leave a comment that's it okay guys i'll see you in the next one thank you so much for watching bye